I made something. And like Devo, I have an uncontrollable urge to tell you all about it. If you follow the world of vintage computing and retro computing, you may have heard of a cute little device called the HDD Clicker. This was something created by Matthias Werner, and a version of it is currently being sold by Serta Shop. And what the HDD Clicker does is essentially its namesake. It clicks whenever there's hard disk drive activity. The idea is that you put it in line between the controller card and the LED light of the controller card, and then every time the LED light would light up, the HDD clicker would click. And you might be thinking, why would anyone want that? Why would anyone want to make their computer noisier? Well, the advantage of the HDD clicker is that if you have converted your uh, retro system to solid state storage, like a compact flash card or an SD card, uh, you may miss the nostalgic sounds of hard disk activity, including the uh, actuator arm being moved around by the uh, stepper motor. So the HDD clicker rectifies that. Now, if this feature of adding a click to hard drive activity seems familiar, you might be thinking of the Plus Hard Card, which was a hard drive on a card that came out in the latter part of the 1980s. Uh, Plus would uh, attach their hard drives to controllers and put it all on the same ISA card, but because it was inside the system and the hard drives were then new IDE drives and very quiet, there was usually no indication of disk activity. So Plus built into their BIOS the ability to turn on and off a small click whenever there was hard drive activity. So I was reminded of that when looking at the HDD clicker, but one thing bothered me, and that was that a lot of the videos that are demonstrating the HDD clicker are doing so on DOS PCs. And if you have a DOS PC, you can do what the HDD clicker does in software. So, I did just that. I wrote a memory resident program called Soft HDDI, which stands for Soft Hard Disk Drive Indicators. And the indicators is plural because it does more than click. And I'd like to tell you about it. So yeah, seeing the HDD clicker demonstrated in DOS just got me thinking, you know, all PCs have a speaker, and in DOS anyway, all hard disk drive activity goes through the interrupt 13 hex disk drive services in the BIOS. Uh, so if you want to read a sector or write a sector or whatever, you call those services. And it dawned on me that you could just write a memory resonant program that hooks interrupt 13 hex, and whenever there's one of those services called, it would click the speaker. And so I wrote that. But then some people who have solid state storage may still want an indicator that there's hard disk drive activity, but not necessarily click the speaker. So I got the idea to also create a virtual on-screen LED. So what this does is that every time there's disk activity, it will flick a little LED in the top left corner of the screen. And it does this through various ways, either by drawing a quick bitmap in graphics mode or coloring the background and the, and the letters in red uh, while in text mode. And then I got thinking even more and realized that, you know, keyboards have LEDs. If you've got a, an AT or later, a 286 or later, there are LEDs right on your keyboard. So I added that to the program, and every time there's disk activity, you can choose to flash all of the keyboard LEDs. Now the purpose of this video is not to dunk on the HDD clicker. I think it's a cool little product. It doesn't really cost that much. You can certainly make it yourself for cheap, but for anyone who doesn't want to order it or want to build it, now you have a software solution. And I'm gonna demonstrate it soon, but before I do that, I wanted to cover uh, a few things on why you might not want to use my program and may wanna use the HDD Clicker instead. Uh, the number one advantage of the HDD Clicker is that all it does is go in line between the controller and the LED, so it works with any system. Uh, you could use it with an Amiga, you could use it with a Mac. Obviously, my software only works in DOS. Another reason is that being a DOS program, it is unlikely you would be able to get it to work in Windows 95 or 98. Finally, the, the third reason is that your PC speaker may not be loud enough. I've certainly used a lot of systems that had little piezo tweeters in them and uh, they just don't click very loudly. So once again, hardware is your solution there. 
But hey, enough of me yammering. Let's go to the PC in the background here and check it out. Now, just because I'm demonstrating it on an original PC doesn't mean it's only for the oldest computers. I tested it on systems as fast as a Pentium Pro 200. So you're not limited to specifically old systems. If it can run DOS, it can run this program. So here we are at my IBM XT, which I think is a great way to demonstrate soft HDDI because uh, if it runs perfectly on this slow a system, it'll run just fine on any system. So the first indicator that we're going to do is the PC speaker clicking. We're here specifically because uh, just to ensure we definitely can hear the clicking, I've routed my PC speaker up to these amplified speakers. To run it, if you run soft HDDI without any arguments, you get a list of arguments how to start it. Uh, you start it by telling it which indicators you want, and you can combine indicators. You can have one, two, or all three running if you want. In this case, I want the virtual seek sound, which is the clicking. And now, whenever I do something, it will make a click. Now, I could do a directory, but that only makes like a couple of clicks. So instead, I'm going to run James Pierce's disk test, which creates a large file and does all sorts of activity on it. So you can hear it every, so every time the quote unquote head moves, uh, it, the program makes a click. Now if the click is too loud or you want an on-screen indicator instead, you can remove it from memory and you can reinstall it with different options. So this time I'm going to do the on-screen LED. And once that's done, we can now see the LED up in the top right corner. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. And there you go. So nice unobtrusive way to figure out if you have hard drive activity, uh, if you don't want the clicking sound. Soft HDDI has support for graphics modes as well. Currently the most common graphics modes are programmed in. Uh, CGA, color text mode, mono text mode, um, even extended text modes like 80 by 43 and 80 by 50 in VGA. And also uh, the most common VGA 256 graphics mode, mode 13 hex. And to demonstrate that, I'll just really quickly throw the system into graphics mode here and run the exercise program. And now, if you can see, there is still an indicator. It is a little LED bitmap. That was regular CGA. If we do, you can also do the, the high res monochrome mode and sure enough, there's the little LED as well. Now you might think painting a bitmap on the screen constantly would take up too much time, but it actually doesn't. Soft HDDI was written in 100% assembler, and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it does not impact disk performance at all. The speed of the disk I.O. is much slower than that of the actual Soft HDDI program. Soft HDDI, in addition to supporting color modes, also supports monochrome systems. So I have here a dual-headed system. I've got two monitors connected to my XT. So if we switch over to the monochrome monitor and run our same test without making any changes, sure enough, we have our indicator in the top right. But what about those keyboard LEDs? Well, you can't demonstrate those on an XT because they don't have them. But on an AT or higher, like this one, this is a Pentium Pro 200, all it takes is starting it up with the right options. And then as we run our exercise, you can see that they do in fact work. The keyboard LED code will also preserve the LEDs that were there before lighting up all three of them. So you won't lose your numlock or your caps lock status. Here's a couple of other features I built into the program. To make the clicking more realistic, it only clicks if a track has changed, which mimics the head stepper motor. If there's disk activity but the head doesn't move, it doesn't click. 
If you're using an original CGA card that suffers from CGA snow noise whenever the screen is written to directly, Soft HDDI handles that gracefully. It also doesn't waste time trying to handle snow if you're not using an original CGA card. And if you're wondering how much RAM Soft HDDI takes up, it's actually about 1K resident, and it also loads itself into upper memory blocks automatically if you have them. Well, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. If you'd like to download Soft HDDI, there's a link in the video's description that takes you to the GitHub repo and a release zip file with the assembled com file. But hey, I want to hear from you. I didn't cover any of the assembler source code because I wanted this video to be accessible to a wider audience. But if you are interested in the nitty gritty and the dirty details, and you want to see me go over the assembler source code, leave a comment. Let me know what you think.